Ah, vous êtes là Hello everybody, here we are in England, or Wales maybe, because just the border. But anyway, we are at Yorton Farm, because there will be the Yorton sale today. It's a major event, and here we have... Nick Luck. Nick Luck, c'est une star de la télé, mesdames, messieurs. Nous sommes ici en Angleterre, enfin la frontière avec le Pays de Galles, pour la Yorton Cell. The Yorton Cell, it's special. Well, huh? Definitely Pays de Galles as well, not, not Angleterre. Not Angleterre, yeah. Pays de Galles. Sorry, Definitely sorry. Pays de Galles, we're over the border here. But we may as well be in France, a little coffee shop here with a pain au chocolat, very civilized. Anywhere where you are, Arno, screams civilized to me. And a saucisson as well, lovely. Shropshire chili and ale salami. <laughs> That's for you to do with as you choose. Shall we go and see who's here at the Yorton sale? Absolutely. There is many, many people, uh, Nick, because uh, maybe we're going to make you discover uh, th this very special venue. It's very Victorian. Can you explain that? Well, yeah, it is. So th th this was built in Victorian times. It was a model farm. So everything was supposed to be self-sufficient. You could live off the land here and everything could be run from here. Uh, it was old Victorian model dairy farm and it's been restored basically brick by brick by uh, James Potter who owns the farm and Dave Futter who runs it uh, with his wife Berta and his sons Lester and Riley and it is, it, it's been painstakingly and beautifully renovated. You just wouldn't see anywhere like it. And the facilities are just, just fantastic. If you look through some of the barns, you can see where the old railway the ran. The railway, yeah, yeah, railway. Old railway oh. tracks ran through, ran through the farm. And it's, a, it's the perfect setting on a beautiful day like this to sell, I think, some of the nicest two-year-old National Hunt stores in, in Europe, many of whom have come originally from France. From France, and some are coming from France because they were bought by those kind of guys, you can come with me because we have here a French team with Thomas Lefray from Arcana. His father brought, um, bred a loud champion. You will have also Sylvain Martin, he's making reconversion. Gabriel Linders and Jean de la Guillonnière, Jean de la Guillonnière the breeder of and so one of the most famous horse in the history. So to our right, we've got the breeders of Alaho mm. and Underso, two of the most exciting chasers of the last couple of decades. The fact that they're here speaks volumes, really, because you think, well, haven't they got all they need at home? Mm -hmm. So that's how good a job I think Dave Futter, George Danners and the team have done in going out and sourcing some nice young horses. Mm. And Gabriel Linders. He's a very special man because he's one of the most successful young trainers and not only in France because he won at Cheltenham this year with Gold Treat. It was a shock, that's right? Yeah, and I think maybe when they went back for the... Gabby will tell you in a minute. I think when they went back for the stairs hurdle, they were just a bit too far out of their ground in a slowly run race. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he can bring over this season. Ah, bah évidemment, la question qui tue, Gabriel, c'est c'est pratique, je me suis mis un peu en hauteur parce qu'il est très grand, mais en fait, la vérité, c'est que c'est comme ça. This works for me, this works for me. Oui, un petit retour avant de parler de la Yorton sur Villemont, la victoire à Cheltenham, parce que c'est ce qui compte pour les Anglais. Tu as gagné à Cheltenham dans le, le temple, le Saint Graal. Gold tweet. Ah ouais, c'était bah, un rêve d'enfant, euh, donc c'est cool. Et, a priori, ça motive d'autres entraîneurs français à, à aller à Cheltenham. Moi, je vais y retourner avec trois chevaux. Donc, euh... Three horses, he come back. Three horses, who? Um, Gold tweet, of course, in the Cliverder. Gold tweet again. Uh, Funny Berry, she will run uh, in January at the Juvenile Hurdle. Mm -hmm. She's a good filly in France. Uh, Funny Berry, very nice filly. She won the listed race and, she, yeah. and um, with Super, Super Gino, because mm. uh, the owner uh, comes from Scotland and uh, the, uh, he won't run at Cheltenham, where he's a good for the big handicap. Yeah. He will run uh, the big handicap in France. The name is Prix du Montgomery, and after I go at uh, Cheltenham. For that and it's funny, yeah. Mm. So it's owned by um, McLennan, a Scottish guy. You have a lot of horses yeah. in France, Super Gino. So why, uh, Gabriel, you are coming here? Because uh, uh, Nick vient de dire, mais il gagne, il vient, uh, il a beaucoup de chevaux français, il vient gagner en Angleterre. Mais alors pourquoi a-t-il besoin de venir ici à Yorton pour en acheter? Why you are coming here to buy? Uh, for the team, because uh, David Futter and uh, everybody is very nice. We are, when we come, uh, we are very welcome. And, uh, and, uh, Every year, uh, I find the nice horse here. Don't know why. Maybe the grass is better in England. <laughs> I don't know. No. Uh, with the French breeder, it's not nice. But uh, when I buy a horse he here, uh, I have a lot of success. Okay, I come back. Mm. Yeah. Yes, he met. He met the first win. He met the first winner of the Yorton Cell. I can't remember his name. What is the uh, premier gagnant? La... Paros. Paros. Ah oui. Paros. He won at Dieppe, and after we sell him in England. Yeah, he, he come back. <laughs> by, by, the horse by Masterstroke, yeah. Paros. Yeah, yeah, yeah mm. absolutely. I remember seeing him win at Musselburgh. Yeah. Nice horse. Good, perfect. So, thank you very much. Merci, Gabriel. So, Nick, where do you want us to bring now? I'm excited that Gabby's bringing more horses back to Cheltenham this year. Just watch your back here. 
Oh, this is, oh, look, look at this horse. It's very nice to see him. It's a Montmartre. It, <laughs> in France, oh, I always say, I always say, say you can't, colors. well, I always say you can't have a Rhone thoroughbred, but that's as near to a Rhone thoroughbred as you're going to get. Montmartre out of Unanime, mm. from the family of Benassan and Bonnelève, and Berejan, old Aga Khan family, of course, and Berejan, that lovely uh, chaser, ultimately, that Henry Daly trained all those years ago. So, so. An interesting old Aga Khan pedigree, this. He has a funny color. There is, would be no shock for him in France because people are used to those colors. But I heard that in Ireland or in England, they said, what is this circus horse? Yeah, well, he is as roan as you can get, isn't he, for a thoroughbred? <laughs> He's an unusual color. But listen, it doesn't really matter what color they are as long as they can run fast. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. That is very important. And that's, a, that's a nice type of horse, the far side of you. The, do, do, do which one? The, the Malinas there. This is a, a, an interesting family that people might know quite well. This is the family of Countrywide Flame, the, the Triumph Hurdle winner. And I, I like that cross as well. And got a, Malinas has put a bit of substance into the family as well. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Maybe you have, we have to catch some very important people. Harold? Howell, don't go too fast, don't go too fast. No, 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 no. Howell, it's the first time I, you, you come here. Why are you coming here, please, today, Harold? Ah, uh, because there's some nice, n nice French bred two year olds here. Mm. And sure, maybe one will end up a racehorse long term. Maybe Nick has a co some question for you. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, normally I speak to Harold about, oh, the last time I spoke to Harold, we, he was talking about going to another sale and buying a, buying a Melbourne Cup winner. I wonder if you could find. Can you find one out of here? Yeah, they could be. You never know <laughs> you, where you, you yeah. never know where good horses turn up. You mm. never know. But it's your first your first time here, yeah, though, Harold. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Overall, do you like what you see? Yeah, there's a good, a good, good, decent standard. Yeah, yeah, good, decent standard, and they're not too big and not too fat. Mm. You know, which is a big thing. You know, mm. three year olds, a lot of three year olds are very big and. I think Dave's made a bit of a virtue, of that, you know hasn't I mean? he? Like yeah. trying to trying to get these yeah. horses kind of lithe, and athletic, fit, and if you ready, ready. If somebody's got the space and the time. French type, in fact. Yeah, yeah but you, you'd, you'd break them straight. You'd break these two-year-olds straight away. Mm. Straight away, you'd break them, and you'd have them jumping, and you have six months' work done by by the time they're three. You know, mm. yeah. that makes a difference. Yeah, that makes, that's, that's why the French horses are so good, because they started so early. Thank you very much, Harold. Have a good have chance. A have a good chance. So. Ah, this is what are you very, very, very important. Can you explain? Glen Rolls, um, fine art, uh, supremo in this area. Got absolutely beautiful pieces here. I love. Oh, you all know more about Ellie Lambert than me. I uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, Ali, yeah, yeah. It's French. It's French. I love this. Ah, Glen, but the, the, the Glen Rolls himself is here. Can you explain what are you doing? What are you showing today? Ellie Lambert, we uh, found, and he lives in Deauville. Mm -hmm. So when we come out to the horse sales, we always buy some of his works at the same time. He, he was in the horse world himself, but he's most incredible. He's like a, a French Lowry. We have a Lowry here. He's the French version. He's wonderful. He Which one will you buy, Nick? Uh, I like this one. I like uh, the jockeys. Yeah, I would say. I would go with the jockeys. That's the most Lowry-esque, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Not quite the matchstick men, no, but... but it's, still got, it's still got the figures with a little bit of a body, but the horses are more matchstick than the, the jockeys. I think they're, they're so distinctive, so stylish. So French, a bit like you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. So what do you, we have to discover then, Nick? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe I saw Charlie's one somewhere. I saw Tom Malone. Maybe we're going to have a look, a look, look there. A broader spread of, of, of people, I think, than, than there ever have been before. Mm. You're saying Harold. Ah, ah who is here? But Bertrand Le Métier. Bertrand Le Métier, qui s'est caché, who is hidden, but we found him. Bertrand Le Métier. First time here at Yorton, Bertrand. First time. First visit. Why did you come today? today? Um, there's a couple of connections of horses I like, and I just wanted to see what um, English two-year-old um, sell look like. Just curiosity. Just curiosity. <laughs> no, no, I will not buy. Just curiosity. I don't believe you. You never know. You never know. <laughs> is it more, is it, Bertie, is it more culturally French, this, than it is, than it is English, in terms of you seeing two-year-olds there ready for auction? So jump spread two-year-olds. Yeah, it's just I think that, you know, the system goes as everybody every year tends to get towards more younger horses. It's, uh, you know, the culture is getting there into having earlier horses. And I think that's a progress, um, not only for, for, you know, English and Irish racing, but for the French system, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an earlier way of producing a horse. 
And one thing that Dave's always done here is he's never been frightened of, of trying to show British breeders French stallions or, uh, and then moving them to Ireland and just trying to bring all the European nations a little bit closer together. This was the first place you saw Malinas, for example. It was the first place you saw Great Pretender in, in Britain. First place in Britain you saw Blue Brazil, the famous example. Um, yeah, and, and so many nice, nice stallions. Sadly, Master Stroke we've lost, but a you know, really, really exciting stallion in his time. So I, I, like, I like that idea, and it, it just shows people a greater sort of diversity of breed, if that makes any sense. Definitely, and the thing which is the most important, it's a global game. You don't forget that, you know, all those three racing, jumping countries were very much tied to one another, the way we do things. And, um, yeah, it's a way forward. Yeah. Excellent. Um, anything caught your eye in particular? Um, I'm just finishing my short list. I'll come back to you. Don't look at numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm, saying no, I'm saying nothing. But, um, 17 Thanks. and 18 was the page. 17 and 18. Well, they, that's an Isfahan gelding um, and a no risk at all filly. Obviously, no risk at all are always going to be popular, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 And, and there, is, there is the number five. The number five is highly, highly recommended. Maybe you're going to ask Lester or Riley Futter or David Futter well, to show us the number five. If five, you find five is the no risk at all gelding mm. out of Steel Dancer, which makes him a, a half-brother to Al Dancer, the, the very smart horse of Di Walters that, um, first of all, Nigel Twist and Davis and then Sam and Thomas did extremely well with. So I uh, won't be surprised to see a lot of interest in uh, a bunch of horses here. So what do we have? We have Amanda Zetteron, we have Brendan Bashford called Bash. Number 16, number 20. Here's a, here's a, here's a nice horse here. Very, you can tell the stallion, Pethas Moon, who's been a resident here at York ever since he retired uh, from racing. He really does stamp his stock. Loose limbed, good size, um, good body. He, he really sort of deserves some better mares to showcase it his talent a little bit more because he's done well with what he's had and the trainers all like them because they've got good temperaments um, and this one's from the, the family of Ollie McGurn do you remember Ollie McGurn? Arnold? Absolutely yeah 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 brilliant very good front running chaser trained by Nigel Twist and Davis mm. of about 15 years ago so this is from, from that family yeah, Peter's Moon Peter's Moon here we had a lot of Blue Brazil last year and now we have a lot of uh, Blue Brazil what do we have? ah we have Lester and the famous Richard Venn we're going to ask the two Lester the very famous Chris Gordon as well who's been a long time <laughs> who's been a long time supporter of Yorton <laughs> you are here with your family so I'll let you go I'll let you do uh, yeah Richard Venn who yeah if, you, if you're looking for a man who's you know, fostered strong relations um, across the across La Manche it's uh, it's Richard the stallion man Le Stallion Man, yeah. Yeah, today. Today I'm not Le Stallion Man. I'm what looking at, come to look at some very nice horses at Yorton Farm. Okay. And um, it, it, you've seen every one of these catalogues since David and the family started this sale. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, how would you rate this, this group? I think it stands, stands up as every sale here has done. You know, possibly there might be a little better quality, uh, but some nice horses. And um, looking forward to the auction later. Good spread of buyers, isn't it? Yeah, we well, have. Potential yeah. buyers, I'm yeah. just looking at them. As, as, you, as you say, yeah, well, there's, there's the French are here and in, in strength, um, uh, some Irish buyers and English buyers, so hopefully, hopefully it'll be a good sell. Um, it's the sort of sale I always think where if you've got a bit of foresight about the game, this is where you want to be because you're just going to get in half a step ahead of the guys going to the store sales next year. I think it's one of the only, obviously, true store two-year-old store sale of its kind, but they've all done a bit more than the, the you know the, the normal store. In that they've um, they've done a little bit of jumping, and uh, we've seen them do that. Obviously, it's all, all in the loose score, and they have them all on film. And uh, yeah, it's a good sale. It's a very different sale, and it suits both pin hookers, and it also suits end users as well. So it's a very good sale from that point of view. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you are an end user with the time and the space and a little bit of patience, then you're going to be spending half what you might next year. Exactly, exactly. You could, you know, pick up a bargain here. And also, you've got the opportunity of having that horse as a two-year-old and getting it ready for the three-year-old, these new three-year-old juvenile hurdles for National Hunt Reds and also bumpers. As the stallion man, mm -hmm. are there stallions in here that you, ha well, most of them you've had some sort of an, in an interest in at some point, but is there a stallion in here that you think we haven't seen the best of yet who is well represented? 
uh, Pedder's Moon, I think. I think um, he, is, he gets a nice model with size. He st seems to stamp his stock. I think he's a very interesting horse. There's a few Bathyrons here. Yeah, you were quite involved in Bathyron. I was, yeah, absolutely. Um, he's a super stallion Bathyron. Yeah, well, well we ha he keeps getting winners. Guillaume McCaird describes him as a, a winning machine. So, uh, yeah, I like, like the... Um, I like him as a sire. I think he's he's going to have plenty of winners and hopefully some better quality winners. Good stuff. Thanks. Maybe there is Lester was yes. Maybe we can ask you, Lester. Thank you, Richard. Maybe we can ask Lester. Those horses are preschool. They are prepared. It's the unique place where we see some horses uh, uh, jumping, and uh, we have we have seen that on the videos. How long does it take to you to prepare those horses? Um, so we, we get the horses in about nine weeks ago, we got them all in and we start off steady with them where we um, start with they go out, throughout the whole prep they go out every day but to start with they, um, they go out of the night in and in of the day and then about six weeks ago we started the process of um, loose jumping them, we start them over poles to start with and then we have smaller barrels and then by the by the as they work through and by the end um, they're running out they're jumping over the bigger barrel that you can see in the videos that are all up on the website um, and we've had some lovely horses go through the prep and I think starting them off a bit earlier and a bit younger they seem to take it on very easily and pick it up very quickly and it doesn't take long at all we probably jump them two two to three times a week so just and they'd only jump a handful of jumps each time they're in there. Lester, what proportion of these horses are bred here at Yorton and what proportion would you buy? And if you are buying them, where are they coming from? So the I'd say probably a third are probably the horses that are bred and then two thirds will be horses that are bought in. Uh, we've got nine yearlings in the sale. Um, one was purchased in England, one was purchased in Ireland and then the rest are all come from France. So there were French horses that have come in. And then with the two-year-olds, they've been bought from Germany, France and Ireland and in this country as well. So it's a variation of different countries that they've come from. So, no, it's uh, great that we have the opportunity to buy horses from different places and different countries. And it brings in different pedigrees that um, you wouldn't always see um, at National Hunt Sales. So. And where is the number five, please, Lester? Lot number five, uh, he is... He is, on the rats, he's, he's, on the, he's been very busy. We've started showing yesterday afternoon and we did a lot of showing yesterday afternoon and we, um, we've been very busy this morning. So if I'll try and get number five out now and we might have a little look at him. Yeah, 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 for sure, for yeah. sure, for sure. Is that because the number five, Nick, is very special. Yeah, this is the horse we were talking about a little bit earlier on. This was uh, the horse by No Risk At All uh, and a half-brother to Al Dancer and from a really deep family of, of talented horses both here and in France. Arno can't tie his shoelaces, unfortunately. <laughs> which uh, French shoes. French shoes. <laughs> French shoes. So where is the number five? All right, well, I think number five's been pretty busy. As Lester was saying, they were showing yesterday. And that means that quite a few people who'd be interested will have already had a good look. He was probably first on most people's shortlist, I would have thought. Why? Because the pedigree the pedigree, Nick, Nick, is incredible. It's a no risk at all. The dam is by Cal Neve. The dam is already uh, already bred Al Dancer, Zars Dancer, who won the Prix du Président de la République. And what is the Président de la République? It's the biggest handicap. It's Group 3. It's the biggest handicap in the whole year in France. So it's yeah. not nothing. Oh. Huh? Yeah. And so many, 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 many wi uh, winners. Nine falls, eight runners, six winners. That's that's what I, what I call a good a good dam. He's called Brisky Dancer, and you will you will see him. He's a marvelous walker. He's a he's a absolute, he's perfect you know in what, any Arno, case. You're selling him to me. It sounds like you're going to buy him. <laughs> maybe we're gonna um, if we want to buy. Maybe we're going to share it because it could halves. be a little bit expensive for me. That might have to go halves. Bit dear for me. Here he is. Look look. Number five. There you are. I'll let what you, do you think about him? I'll let you wax lyrically. Well, if I turn around now and said I didn't like him much, you'd. you'd He'd not be very impressed. I, to be honest, this is the first time I've seen him in the flesh. Well, he certainly doesn't lack a bit of size. He's a fine-looking horse. And again, you know, we were talking talking to Harold Kirk earlier. These these horses look as though they've done a little bit. They look as though they they're here. They're athletic. They're you know they're fit without being too light. And they're they're already on the way to being racehorses. It's not like you just have a have a big store and let them get fat in the field and then expect somebody to do something with them when they're three or four, you know? 
they're well on their way to being racehorses, and I think that's what's that's what you can see in a in a horse like this. Um, but you know, you got to remember. Look at this family. You look deeper into the pedigree. You know, Al Dancer was a you know talented young horse, but you know he's he's now getting a trip. He's now more adaptable. He's now more adaptable as regards ground. You know, there's going to be a lot to work with here. Horses like Ramses de Te and the pedigree as well. Horses who really stayed very well. Yeah, it's the family of horses because I was talking to you about the president of the Republic for Star Dancer. Horses who are precocious enough, but run and run and run again. You also have in this pedigree Ramses de Teille that everybody knows in England. And in his temper, Lester, how is he? Oh, he's a wonderful horse. You can see as he stood here now, he's very chilled out, very relaxed. He's probably been one of the easiest horses to prep throughout the prep. Um, never been above a worked well, jumped well. And since the last two days he's been here showing, he hasn't show, he's shown impeccably the whole way through. And you can just see, look at his temperament here. He's a wonderful temperament. We're just really happy to have a horse like this in the sale. And he's attracted some of the right guys and the big clients. So mm. hopefully in a couple of hours time, he's going through the ring and he's making a good price, hopefully. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thanks for the horse. We must buy him, Nick. Okay. What, what we can do, what we can do. Call, 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 call some friends, maybe. You work out, you work out what they want, Arno, and we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, make it, we'll make it work. We'll make it work for you. Mind, mind, mind the buttress there. Just trying to keep him safe is my <laughs> is my biggest challenge today. So that's good. He's fearless. He's fearless. That that's good. So maybe maybe we're gonna see somebody from Goffs before quitting. We are coming back to the to this uh, funny place uh, with the typically. The great thing is your sense of direction is better than mine because I've been here countless times ever since <laughs> Dave moved in here, and uh, I'm yet to find my way around safely. Um, one of those is probably mine, um, and she's not worth very much. There is here George, George the Stanner. famous, the famous George Stanners, who knows Yorton absolutely perfectly well. We have ah uh, maybe before yeah George 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 hi, Arno, how are you? hi George. So you we are very involved here with Yorton. You came back to Goffs. Can you explain how, how typical, how special, how unique is this cell? It is, you know, if you think that in most days or most sales, you go to a, a natural comp sales complex, you know, like um, Donkster um, and obviously um, Killed Air Paddocks in Ireland. You have to pay for your beer. You have to pay, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. So it's just, it's, a, it's one, one farm producing their own horses, 50 of them. It's not the work of a moment. So the guys do some job. And obviously the surround, surroundings which we're in, which obviously you're walking around the yard now, um, if you're here, there's a lot of first-time people um, here this sale, and every single one of them have commented to us, Mags O'Toole and Harold Kirk and those kind of guys that come up and said, what, what a surrounding. So that's, that's obviously part of it, it adds to it. We've got great weather. So, but we like to have a bit of fun. We had a party last night, and, you know, some of us get a bit excited, but it's, it's all good fun. It's, it's, it's doing business in a nice environment. This, it's got a fascinating history, this place, as I was saying. I wonder if I, I was going to try and see if we could get a word with James. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's over my... Over my right Tell shoulder here, maybe, yeah. ah, but he's just James. Just one minute, please. For one second. How are you, James? Yeah, good, thanks. Great to right? see you. Yeah. Um, I was just saying, I, when I drove around the corner this morning, I'm thinking, my God, there's more going on. There's another building being renovated. It's it's been an amazing project. This, a bit like painting the fourth bridge. I'm not sure you can ever finish, and if you do, you'll have to start well. again. But it is, it's almost literally restoring a 19th century beast and beauty, brick by. By brick. I mean, yeah. how how much satisfaction do you get from looking well, at it working like it is now? It's a great satisfaction. I suppose I see it every day. Somebody come in like, every twelve months, they see a massive difference. Yeah, for I mean, me, it's, I'd it's be gradual. Here, like, twice a year, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. it's just so lovely to see it all come together. Definitely. So we've been at it ten years now. Mm. I hope we'll be finished by March. That's the plan. <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't say which March, did I? <laughs> when when you when you bought it and, and then you and Dave had the idea to get get the whole yeah. enterprise going here, um, what made you do it? Because it's not the most obvious place in the world. No, to, but to it, take but, on. But, but the secret was to join the property we own mm. originally. You say. Yeah. So of course, I, you're just over the you're just over the valley exactly, there. Yeah. They, no, just that. Just yeah. literally joined. We got a road from our place to here. Mm. So uh, so that was that was the attraction. And it, it was a, it was a tenanted farm. Seven tenants, council sold it, so they wanted the best price, they wanted the tenants looked after, and they wanted a future use. 
So not to put a good price in because I wanted it. Mm. Seven tenants we could rehouse in existing houses we had. Future use was a natural and stud. But Dave outgrew where he was, mm. so it all happened sooner rather than later. But we, we were able to work around Yorton, mm. and uh, here we are today. Yeah, and it, it's great. I mean, and this sale day is a bit special, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. It's, uh, it's great, you know, there's so much work gone into it. It's, uh, and it's getting more and more popular every year. I always look around here and think of that famous phrase, what did the Victorians do for us? And it's, I mean, they, they had a hell of a lot of money and they knew, they knew how to spend it. It's bad enough repairing it. I wouldn't yeah. like to build it. I mean, it is, it is amazing. It, it, the mind boggles when you think then how much you know, hand craftsmanship must have gone into this. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Like the guy that built it, he was a, he was a shipper banker from Liverpool. So he must have had endless pots of money to do it. See, Arno, it was the days of the British Empire when everyone here had loads when of money. We, when we were great. <laughs> <laughs> Good old time. Now, Good old time. And now we just need generous and slightly crazy benefactors like James Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And well, well, and the whole, I summed it up well. And then the whole game would be in better shape, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank nice you, man. Okay, great, yes. Yeah, nice to see you. Cheers. Thank you, James. Cheers. Have a good day. Have a good day. So now maybe we will finish, Cheers. Nick. Ah, Charlie, 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 Charlie Swan. Charlie Swan, Max O'Toole. I told you all the greats were here. Mm. Charlie, your first visit to Yorton. That's right, yep. How are you Thanks. enjoying it so far? Mags are scarpered. <laughs> good, good. What, yeah, brought you, what, what brought you here? I suppose it was good. You know, the catalogue looked good. And, um, you know, Dave is a nice guy, so um, no, it's it, it's good to come here and um, there's some nice horses. Um, what what's been your impression of the place as a whole? Oh, sure, it's a gorgeous place, isn't it? It's um, you know the countryside is amazing here, and um, you know there's a nice at nice atmosphere. And I, I, I say the the sort of caliber of uh, a potential buyer is, is definitely deeper and broader than perhaps it has been in previous years. And, is there something that strikes you about the way these horses have been have been prepared and, and the way they've been shown? Oh, they've been prepared very, very well. Um, yeah, and shown it's, you know, it's a very professionally run um, um, outfit. So, um, you know, you know, more luck to them. Hopefully they have a good sale. But there's some nice horses here. Mm. Yeah. And if you, were, if you were, were buying a horse there, I'm not saying you will, but if you did, would that be with an intention that, that it would be end use or is it something that you'd be looking to, to resell? Well I think there's horses for, for everybody here. There is, you know, for to, to resell and, and there is the odd one that's probably just for, for the end the end user. Mm. But um you know I think there's there's something for everybody to hear, really. Yeah. Excellent. Well good to see you. Thanks. Thank you. Charlie Swan, the world famous Charlie Swan. Mr. Isterbrack is here. <laughs> Mr. Isterbrack. So now, Nick, uh, I think it's time to finish that uh, oh, yeah, preview. I've said, I've said quite enough, yeah. Man, there is two solutions now. Go on. On our left, there is those funny English breakfast or uh, f funny things to eat and drink. On our right, there is the f uh, beer, free beer. What is your choice? Well, have you not got a glass of champagne for me? Such a good choice, and there is now the big D, David Futter. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, yeah, of course we are. Yeah, always ready for it. But no, it's it's great to have everyone here. Place looks great. The horses look fantastic, and some lovely people here from Germany and France and Ireland and UK. It's great. Great to have these you two walking around. You know, he's got. He feels good about life as he's wearing that snug orange linen shirt. It, hopefully it's the only one that I don't sweat too much in because I've sweated profusely. But it's there's, every there's, day there's younger. A with, there's a man with confidence. Every All day right. younger. So now it's champagne time because the most important in life is to celebrate before rather than after. Santé. Santé.